Jabu had waited too long for his lioness to feed him. Overnight, his stealth carried him into the path of a careless zebra. The rest of the herd is still skittish. One animal had already lost his tail to a hungry pride, but for the dazed stallion, it was all over in seconds. The big male watches his kill from a distance, exhausted by the chase, exhilarated by the sport. Jabu will feast later. Tired from the hunt, he needs to rest. But his prey will be safe. Few scavengers will risk the sudden return of the Lion King. spore of Nabamba's pride across Mziki Marsh. This vast tract of savanna is favoured by the lions in the dry air of winter, but it's a region also shared by Pinder's giraffe and white rhino population. Through modern times, most of southern Africa's wildlife has been ravaged by hunting and habitat loss. Farmland, overgrazed and buffeted by domestic stock, has ripped the heart out of the original bush. The open, broad-leaved woodland, acacia bushveld, and wetland habitat had all but disappeared, taking with it the wildlife. A few years ago, the Pinder project was born. 17,000 hectares of farmland bought up in KwaZulu-Natal along South Africa's eastern seaboard. What followed was the largest game restocking program ever seen on the subcontinent. The land was overgrazed to a certain extent and wasn't in very good shape. They put all these farms together, put a perimeter fence around it, and then brought in a lot of game. And we brought in elephant, we brought in rhino. We started off with those sort of animals and then started with, with cheetah, bringing in cheetah onto the reserve, mainly to get them used to the area before the lions came on, because the lion is the more superior predator as such and would, would dominate the cheetahs. We wanted to get them settled first before the lions came in. Andrew Lewis is habitat manager at Pinda, one of those committed to the restoration of Southern Africa's ecosystem. Pinda is the Zulu word for return, and the aim of his company, Conservation Corporation Africa, is to return the land to its traditional wildlife and at the same time, restore the habitat to its original state. Pinda is cautiously open to top-level tourism, limited and luxurious. Dreams of extending the green frontier require funds, and the reserve's lion pride has already earned its keep. The lions on this property are actually generating revenue for the property through ecotourism and that there are a benefit to the wildlife because of the draw card. There's a few animals, lions, elephants for example and, and rhinos and, and possibly giraffes but those are your main ones that people come to see and we've been very fortunate to be able to have lions on the property and I think 
those lines that we, we have have given us amazing value for our guests and by getting a guest in here we're getting revenue into the area and that's benefiting wildlife as a whole. Jabu has returned to his kill. He licks the bloated carcass, but still there is no feeding. Lions will gloat over their prey, delaying the first bite until the meat ripens. For Jabu, the prospect of the meal is to be relished as much as the eventual feast. Meanwhile, Nabambo's pride is on the prowl. The older cubs are 10 months now, weaned, but still dependent upon Nabambo for food. The cubs are learning to stalk, but they won't kill for another six months. Young male lions are usually ejected from the pride when they are about two years old, fending for themselves they form hunting groups with other isolated males. Nabambo's cubs aren't sure what to do with prey so close. But the lioness isn't far behind. Their time for hunting will come. Nabambo's four-year-old daughter also lives with a pride. She is the mother of the group's youngest offspring, seven-week twins Umveli and Damana. The little cubs have been hidden since birth and now stay close within the protective circle. has little time for his small cub. When he is older, the mana will hunt with his father, but for the moment, the big male has nothing to do with his young son. Dejected, the cub finds solace among his siblings. A young giraffe lies helpless in the grass. The animal's complicated vertebra means it is unable to rest its neck for any length of time. Lack of mobility means blood to the brain slows, leaving the animal disabled.
efforts to lift the head fail. And rather than leave the giraffe vulnerable to predators, the young bull is shot by rangers. serve energy 20 hours a day, waking only to groom and hunt. The lioness shows little sign of her injured leg, but the tusks of the warthog have torn sinew and muscle, slowing her in the pursuit of prey. Once again, Nabambo and her pride will go hungry. But the big lioness senses another kill nearby. A young giraffe slain by humans will provide meat for her cubs. Leaving the pride, Nabambo follows the scent. alone. The older cubs know the drill. They will wait for Namumbo's call to take them to the kill. The day moves into shadow. The cubs are restless and a little afraid. Adult lions have few enemies, but cubs, even those 10 months old, are at the mercy of leopard and other predators. Bambo has reached the kill, but her daughter is there first. Even though females hunt together, rivalry for the prey is fierce. The big lioness begins the trek back for her cubs, but the youngsters have heard her call and they meet halfway. Nabambo settles herself in the long grass. The cubs are unfamiliar with her behavior. A female will usually head the charge with any kill, splitting the hide of the victim and leading the way for the pride to eat. But there is human scent around the giraffe and the big lioness is cautious. She watches her cubs, hidden, alert to any potential threat. The cubs are curious, confused by this new smell. The 
lioness moves in for a final check. But she has already made up her mind. The carcass is tainted. There are foreign traces. A dangerous ambience. Instinct tells her this is not food fit for her cubs. Disappointed, the bamboo moves away. The scent of another night stalk already in the wind. After two days, Jabu has returned to his kill with another younger male. Three-year-old Tembi is a son from a previous liaison with Nabambo, and the two paired up after Tembi was ousted from the pride. Pride males are lazy and will gladly let the females track down prey. But the theory that males won't hunt is a fallacy. Any hungry male will hunt for himself when no free lunch is provided by the lioness, hyenas or other predators. But studies show single hunters are more successful at night. Lions are sociable cats the only group to take part in communal hunts. Ambush is an important part of the lion's strategy. Often one pride female will round up the prey from the front, driving it towards a second lioness. As in most cases, the pride male will only get involved if he has to. Accidents involving humans are rare in Southern Africa's game reserves. Our primal fear of being eaten has been well documented. But in fact, lions seldom attack if they're not provoked. At Pinder, great care is taken to limit the number of people viewing game. Emphasis is placed on causing the animal as little stress as possible. Man isn't a part of their natural food source. They don't normally go out and, and hunt people. I think your lions are opportunists, sir. And I certainly think that if your lion is very hungry, under stress, I don't think they'll necessarily go out to, to hunt you down, but if you interfere with them, they'll certainly kill you. And there's a good chance they might eat you at the same time. With all animals, it's how you treat them is what's the reaction you're going to get back from them. Certainly at Pinda, all our guides go through a training course and they're all brought up to a certain standard. There is a certain operating ethic with regards to viewing animals and we certainly try and be as sensitive to the animals as possible. Cradled within the arms of the Yabomba Mountains and the Indian Ocean, Pinda covers one of the most diverse regions of Africa. Here are found seven different ecosystems. 
from palm savannah and bush felt to rare sand forest and dense thorn bush, all restored from the pastoral belt which had swept down the east coast. Where cotton, pineapple and cattle farms once stood, Lion now roam their habitat again, alongside some traditional neighbours. Pinder sees its responsibility to the region extending beyond restoration of habitat and wildlife. It provides schools and a clinic for the local Zulu community, as well as employment. In the eyes of Andrew Lewis, essential ingredients for a successful operation. It's very important to involve the communities around your reserve because they have to benefit as well. There's no point in just taking land, get some investors to invest in it, if you don't allow the people who's on the periphery of that reserve to benefit from it, you, you're going to have an immense problem with poaching and they're going to cut your fences down and you're just going to have an uphill battle. In 1992, the Pinder lions were among the first of the big five animals to be relocated to the reserve. The original pride came from the northern province of South Africa, a vast scrubby region flanked by the ragged Drunkensberg Mountains near the Mozambique border. Peter Rogers helped round up Pinder's first pride, handling the lion's capture and subsequent move south. Today, he's head vet at the Hutzpreut Research and Breeding Centre for Endangered Species, overseeing its cheetah breeding program. But it's the discovery of what's believed to be a long extinct strain of lion that has put Peter's centre on the map. We were involved in the rescue of these circus animals that came down through Africa and were abandoned in Maputo. We were just founded by a, an animal a welfare group called Animal Defenders based in London. And they said, you know, could we just keep these animals temporary? First they mentioned tigers. And then they came back and said, well, there's six lions as well. So we said, yeah, we could hold them temporarily just to, until they found permanent homes for them, uh, but basically get them out of the predicament that they were and the shocking conditions that they were in, in, in Maputo and Mozambique. When the lions arrived at the breeding centre, their size, pale colouring, and the male's thick black belly mane put them into the category of the Cape or Barbary lion, not seen in the wild since the early 1920s. A few still exist in captivity, and a male and female were brought to South Africa from an Italian zoo for breeding purposes. But attempts to mate Arkef, the big male from the ill-fated Mozambique circus with the Italian female are proving difficult.
Arkef is overprotective, even preventing the lioness from eating when the meat truck arrives. Finally though, Sissi makes her breakthrough. We'll see you up in the front there, Mark. You're going to go to that sort of middle central area. Where are you going to go? In the next enclosure, Arturo, the Italian Barbary male, is about to be sedated. His attention to his sister Cece through the fence is hampering mating efforts, and Peter Rogers is keen to move the big male. He shoots the dart into Arturo's rump. Arturo has been sterilized, but while his breeding days are finished, he'll live out his days at the center. His female companion, another Barbary from the Mozambique circus, is drawn away by the meat truck. It's 20 minutes before the anesthetic takes effect. just to put him back into the cage, okay? One, two, three, four! Yeah. The anaesthetic gives Peter Rogers and his team a chance to check over the 12-year-old lion. He'll spend a few weeks in this cage before being returned to his enclosure for observation. I still want to inject him and everything, Mark. It's very exciting to be part of this project because um, they, they feel that there are perhaps not many Barbaries, if any, that are really pure, that are left even in captivity. They feel that over time other animals from other, other genetic bases are brought in. So there's a big project afoot, Oxford University, to do the genetics. So that's just getting off the ground now. Okay. We just put under the skin of the neck if we can find the skin under this big beard of his. Normally lions wouldn't have this many ticks, but being a from Italy, a European line, it doesn't have that innate or inherent resistance to ticks. It does come with time. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can put him in there and roll him over inside there. His eyes closed. Immediate term now is to get these ones to breed. And we'll take it day by day from here and, and, and see how it goes. But the, the, the prime object initially was just to get these animals back into good health and it's developed into something a lot bigger. While the breeding center's lions are healthy, it's not the case a few kilometers away in the Kruger National Park, where TB has ravaged half the population. Infected buffalo have been blamed for the outbreak, primarily in the south of the park. And attempts are being made to fence off the diseased area. In 
the lions are preying on infected buffalo. Of course it's an exotic disease, not a, an indigenous disease. The lions are totally naive and they've got no resistance to it. So it's, it's a big problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult decision to make as to what to do. It's a very topical and heated subject at the moment. Begun. Nabambo keeps her cubs close. They're hungry, but tonight only Impala can be tracked down, a morsel for the lioness. Food is scarce at this time of year, so the pride's territory covers a large area. Lions can only afford to be territorial where there is a reliable supply of game. Jabu wants to mate. He's been with his pride for nearly a year now. But Nabambo would prefer a larger group of males around her. Eventually, though, Jabu will have to join forces with other males to have a chance of keeping this pride. The big male is only seven years old and a fine specimen, weighing in at just under 200 kilograms. For the moment, he's secure. Although tonight, the bumbo has hunting on her mind. The cubs follow in the lioness's wake. If there is a kill, she will feed first. Often, weak cubs lose out to a hungry mother. High juvenile mortality rates are the result of lean times. Jabu has had enough. He's been walking for hours. Sleep is more important. And the zebra he ate two days ago will suffice for another night. Bumbo has made a kill, a young Nyala buck. It's been three days since the pride has eaten, and this will provide meat for them all. But the lioness will eat first. The 
cubs know the routine. They will get their turn. But Mkosi is hungry. He creeps towards his mother. As the biggest of the cub. Mkosi watches. A lioness can eat more than 20 kilograms in a single sitting. This could be a long wait for the little cub. Nkosi approaches the kill cautiously. Sometimes a lioness will turn on her cubs. But today, Nabambo is pleased with her efforts. Bumbo has had her fill, for the moment anyway. Lions never eat the stomach of a kill. She will bury it before dragging off the carcass. This way, hyenas and other predators are thrown off the scent. The evidence has been buried. The carcass is no more. Nabambo's daughter hears the call. It is the second this morning. The first was the strangling cry of the Nyala as Nabambo broke the young buck's back. There was no struggle. The big lioness is a seasoned hunter. The rest of the pride will feast on the carcass after Nabamba retires. But first, they will drag it into the bushes, away from prying eyes, away from raptors already circling the kill scene. created a nervous edge. Even the hippo, its bad temper legendary, is flustered, anxious to protect its waterhole. The wildebeest are a favorite prey for lions. Naturally, they feel vulnerable. But for the pride, there is no agitation. Gorged, they will sleep for the next day. Even Mveli and Damana the seven-week twins have tasted blood for the first time. But it will be many months before they take part in a hunt. For the moment, they just want to play with Nkosi. The older cub is beginning to take on the shaggy mane of the bigger males. Within 18 months, he will be hunting with them, competing for his own pride. In the meantime, though, he has to contend with his young siblings. Oh, <laughs> my 
Jabu rejoins the pride. He has missed out on the kill, but he didn't share his zebra with the rest of the pride the previous day. A half-hearted attempt at mating, but the big lion's attention is drawn to a curious onlooker. With the pride so close, the giraffe won't be sitting for long. Drinking and sitting is when they are at their most vulnerable. Jabu keeps an eye on his group. Pride takeovers by other males are common and savage fights can occur between the pride male and the intruder. If a takeover is successful, the new male will usually kill all the suckling young of his former rival. When a nursing mother loses her cubs, she comes into heat within a few weeks. The normal interval between cubs is about two years with a gestation time of three to four months. Jabu marks his territory, but it may soon be all in vain. A fresh infusion of lion genes is necessary to avoid the effects of long-term inbreeding. It's likely Jabu and his son Tembi will be swapped for males from another game reserve. This will broaden the bloodlines of future lions and avoid the genetic risks currently facing the pride at Pinda. Vultures have found the dead buck, but there is little left of the carcass. Mabamba and her pride have eaten. The big lioness tries to dislodge Nyala fur from her teeth. Tomorrow, the next day, there will be another kill. Mabamba's cubs will grow up strong. The lion is the greatest of all predators, the essence of all that is Africa. And yet, there are fewer than 50,000 left in the wild. The future for the species lies in managed reserves such as Pinda. Here in Zululand, the lion roams free for the first time since the beginning of this century. At Pinda, the philosophy has always been simple. Africa's wildlife land, undervalued and underutilized, is the continent's most precious natural resource. Focusing on the animals, their habitat and local communities is just the beginning of an African renaissance. Pinda is, after all, the Zulu word for return. Maybe too, it's a chance for man to redeem himself 